Welcome to Harvest Valley Worship Center's Sermon of the Week. You can discover more about our church, pastors, and special guests at hvwc.com. We hope that you are blessed by today's message. Okay, we're going to move into the, to the message. You guys ready for the word today? John said, about time. Um, you know, every Sunday is different um, because we really want to make sure we're doing what God's asked us to do, whether it's in the worship or which announcements, all of that kind of stuff. We try and try and lay these things before the Lord. Um, last week was wild. We had, we had our friend Malvina, um, who is a very strong prophetic voice come. And um, I just wanted to, uh, how many of you were able to receive the email that I sent out and read it? Okay, awesome. So if you're in our database, you got an email. So double check your spam. Okay, make, no, make sure you didn't go in the spam. I talked a little bit about what is it, what's required of us when we have somebody who's got a really strong prophetic gifting. Hey, the TV is working, by the way. Okay, good. So there's very strong prophetic gifting. Um, when they come in, sometimes it stirs things up. People get a little antsy. They get triggered. They got all types of stuff going on. And we say yes and amen to that because we want all that God has for us. And sometimes people will bring a word that makes you uncomfortable or they say things that you're not sure about or whatever it is. And that's always good. It always draws us closer to Jesus. How many of you know we don't avoid discomfort in the kingdom? We don't avoid it, right? Where does, where's the Holy Spirit meet you? In your discomfort. He's the comforter. So he's actually, he's actually here to meet you in your discomfort. So, um, you know, with that, I just want to um, just say, please go find that. If you did not get that email, um, will shoot me a text or whatever, and I'll make sure that you get it. Okay. God, okay. Admin at hvwc.com or call the phone number here at the church, and Anna will take care of that for you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are continuing our series, Authentic, today, where we are talking about what does it mean to be authentic. We've talked about several different arenas of authenticity. We talked about how to handle our emotions, right? Because sometimes we, we get a little out of whack with our emotions, and we have to bring that under the power of God through prayer. We have to submit our emotions to the Lord. They're great check engine lights. They're horrible drivers, right? You don't, you don't want your emotions to drive you. We've also talked about having authentic faith, the ability to be rooted and grounded and authentic in what you believe. Let me just say this about having authentic faith. Our faith isn't just knowing something, it's knowing someone. It is about having a depth of relationship with Jesus Christ, not, not, not just knowing your scriptures. Yes, you need to know the word. Why do you need to know the word? Because it reveals who Jesus is, right? Because it's about your relationship with Jesus, not religious duty. So we talked about authentic faith. We've talked on numbers, uh, a number of different issues um, and you know, I will say this, um, I really want us to be able to step in, understand, can we make sure that, uh, make sure that Spotify is off, like shut down? Thank you. Zeph's new, Zeph's learning, come on. Thank you, Zeph. We appreciate you, Zeph. And to our new sound guys, we, we, we're training a bunch of new people. So we're just super grateful for all of you guys. Thank you. All right. Um, as we look at being authentic, we understand the meaning of authentic means that you are genuine or have an undisputed origin. Genuine or undisputed origin. One of the most common phrases that we hear about Harvest Valley is people say, wow, these people are authentic. We really, and, and, and that's awesome to hear, but it has to kind of permeate all of who we are. 
not just one area here, one area there. Um, and one of the areas that I wanted to bring us back to today is to have an authentic mission. To remind ourselves of our undisputed origin with God and the genuineness of what we are pursuing. Okay. Um, when Meek and I were called into ministry, we did not know what it would look like. How many of you have been in ministries like, I don't like that. I don't want to be around that. I don't, mm, you know. How many of you have been around ministries you are like, I love everything that they do. Right? I mean, I think we, we could probably find both on the spectrum. And yet, when you're called into ministry, God actually wants you to build what he puts in your heart to build. And, and this is running on uh, 13 years ago, 13, 14 years ago, that we said, okay, let's figure this out. What is this going to look like? And I'm a visionary. I dream big dreams. Not all of them from God, but I dream big dreams. Okay, and, and I can cast vision. I'm like, oh, yeah, this, this. And for the settlers, the, the ones who are like, I want to nest. I, want, I don't like change. I want it all the same. And I'm already like, we're going to build this. We're going to go do this. And they're like, oh, I'm not done here yet. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah, we started that. Move on to the next thing, right? So that, I know that that's part of my weakness as a leader. So I've learned how to kind of tame that baby down a little bit. Okay, let's finish one thing before we, I'm like, now I'll write the vision out. I'll make a plane. Don't worry. Like, we'll have the road, we got the road map, but we'll, we'll cast it when it's time to come. Amen? Amen? So, we have had to ask the Lord often about what he's doing, where he's taking us, and where he's going. We do this every year at our leadership retreat where we get our core team, our elders. We come together and we pray. We say, God, what are you saying about Harvest Valley for this next year? What is it that you're releasing in this next year? And this is what brought us to the Rooted Identity Series this year. It's because we took time alone. We actually got a uh, Airbnb, VRBO, whatever, uh, a ways away. And we just got together and we spent the weekend together. We prayed and we sought the Lord and we said, God, what are you saying? And we came out of that really hearing clearly, okay, we're going to focus on having a rooted identity. And we're looking at the, at the, at the whole process of the tree, right? From the roots, having connected growth, our roots going deep having branches that sowing seed and providing cover as well as seeing from the crown, seeing from God's perspective. So we're constantly on this theme all year. And, and the Lord asked me to start talking about authenticity because good trees bear good fruit. Bad trees bear bad fruit. And if we are inauthentic or we're hypocritical or we're living in two different worlds at the same time, thinking we're okay, we're going to produce bad fruit. If we're not fearing God and we're fearing man, we're going to produce bad fruit. All right. So one of the things that really became clear for Mika and me in our hearts was that we would be a place where God met with his people in power and that we love the way Jesus loved. And I found great meaning in several passages of scripture that really shaped our vision. We're going to cover two of those today. And we've talked, we talk about these passages at length in what we call our leader step. So whenever you are new here, we want you to go through a four week at home. It doesn't, it could take six hours or it could take four weeks or it could take six months. Depends on you right? It's self-directed, self-led on video where we walk you through a workbook so that you get to know our DNA. You get to know our culture. You get to know what our beliefs are, who we are, what we think about the word and prayer, these fundamental things. And we want to help discover what are your gifts. So there's gifts assessments and, and personality profiles, all that kind of stuff. We do all that. And, and the cool thing about it is that we get to know you and you get to know us in a very, like, at, take it at your own pace. After that, if you want to lead a small group or you want to be in any form of assisting, uh, being a servant uh, leader and assisting on the serve team, or you want to lead a serve team, then we have you go through what's called leader step. And in leader step, we talk about our core DNA as a church in great detail, in great detail, because you have to really get our heart if you're going to lead here, okay? 
Now, you're here to receive ministry. Awesome. Praise the Lord. That's all. You're here for that purpose. I love that. I'm so glad that you're here. But if you feel like you're called to lead, we won't really want to make sure that you get our, our DNA uh, really firmly understood. So we cover these two passages of Scripture that we're going to go over today in Leader Step, and we keep these core ideas in front of us all the time. If we get off track in ministry and we start comparing to other ministries, or we start competing with other ministries, we're off track. We're not doing what God has called us to do. We become inauthentic as a ministry if I'm looking at noses and nickels. If my number one priority as a pastor is how do I increase the bottom line, I'm running a business, not a family of, of God. Now, God is our provider. He will meet every need. Amen. He's, he's going to meet every need. And you know what? God's going to bring a bunch of people in for a season, and we get to send a bunch of people out for a season. It's up to the Lord. Our responsibility is to fulfill the mission and the vision that he's given us to the best of our ability, and all the fruit belongs to who? To God. It all belongs to him. We do our part, and, he, and he's the one, Right? Now, with that in mind, authenticity means that we are, are genuine with our mission. We understand that our mission is undisputed in origin. It's from the Lord. This is not a good idea just created by man. This was God who is guiding us and directing us as a community of faith. And each of us individually needs to hear the Lord about your mission that he has you on as well. Not just corporately, but personally. Now, being genuine is about being real. It's about being honest. It's about being vulnerable. It's about not hiding all your garbage. If you're going to be authentic, you got to let people see the dark side of you just as much as the nice, bright, shiny side of you. This is why part of our vision is to be a refuge for healing. If we're not safe enough for people to confess their sins and experience the grace of God, we are not fulfilling the vi we are not becoming the people that God has called us to be. If we become judgmental based on someone's personal situation, based on whatever is going on in their world, we become judgy instead of open and accepting, we've missed the mark. And I love our church doesn't do that. And I love that if we start seeing it, y'all call each other out on it. I've seen people, I've seen the self-correction happen in the moment. I, I saw something a couple years ago where somebody was kind of like talking down to somebody. I don't think they realized they were doing it. And our, one of our leaders just walked up and just started speaking life over them. And the whole conversation flipped around. It just like, and, and the person goes, oh. Oh, I didn't realize I was, but I was because this person just came in the opposite spirit. I love it. You guys, you guys do that naturally. It's really cool. Anybody else hot in here? Come on, it's feeling toasty. It's a, it's a warm one today. $6,000. We're getting many splits in here. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. All right. All right. We have to deal honestly with our brokenness and allow our faith to be firmly rooted in the Word of God and empowered through prayer. Dennis spoke a few weeks ago about being sweetly broken, dealing with our brokenness before the Lord because He is always the one who is most gentle. He sees us in our brokenness and He loves us unconditionally and He wants to heal us, right? But if we're dishonest about our brokenness, you are, you are not being authentic with God or with the people around you. And God is just calling us into a season of just being real. Just be authentic. Be who God has called you to be. Now, I want to walk, um, walk you through the passages that have shaped us and remind us about our undisputed origin. First passage we're going to talk about this morning is Isaiah 58, 10 through 12. It's uh, one that is very common. We'll start here in verse 10, and we'll stay on this for a minute. Do you guys want to read it with me? 
If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness and the darkness shall be as the noonday. So if we extend our soul, didn't say money. It didn't even say time. If you extend your soul, what's your soul? It's your heart. Remember, authentic faith is a heart issue, right? It's the inner man. If, can you extend your heart to those who are broken and hurting, to those souls that are afflicted? We have to extend the wholeness of what God has put in us to those around us. We don't withhold. We're generous. And we let our light shine like it's like the Lord tells us to in Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men. Amen? Now, verse 11. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. We are a people that are led by the Spirit of God. If, if you're only going to be led by biblical principles, you will live a religious life. If you're just focused on getting the principles and just following the principles, following the rules, and that's all you're worried about, you will become religious. We, we love the principles of God. But we listen to the Spirit of God for how they're applied. Amen. The Lord will guide you continually. He will satisfy your soul in drought. We come to the Lord for refreshing. We don't escape in our dopamine trail of Instagram reels. Yeah. Right? Right? And the dopamine of pornography or the dopamine of, of whatever else it is that you're feeding your brain so that you can feel good. No, we shut that off and we go to the Lord. We go to the Lord. Amen? Amen. So here's the thing. If we're being led by the Spirit of God, can you put that back up, Zeph? We're still, go still on this one. It says, you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. What does that remind you of? Being filled with the Spirit and having a spring of water come up from inside of you and it doesn't fail. Amen. So here we see, like, listen, the Lord's going to guide you. He's going to satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of waters whose waters do not fail. This is our reminder that we must be led by the Spirit of God and we must be filled with the, over, with the overflow of the Holy Spirit. Okay, go ahead and move to the next one for me, Zeph. You're doing a great job. Those from among, among you shall build the old waste places, the dumps, the garbage piles. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. It's generational. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. Uh, you know, it's funny. The, the capitalizations was, uh, was not in the Hebrew. So where it capitalizes it, like it's for God, you shall be called the restorer of the streets, you know, all of that. It's in light of a messianic prophecy, but it's actually, a, it's, a, it's a messianic prophecy, but it's actually to the people of Israel prophesying what would come. And I believe it's a prophecy clearly about the church. Like this is who we are, Okay. So there, we sometimes can read a capital letters to go, oh, well, that's just talking about God. No, he's saying that you get to be, God in you gets to be a restorer of streets to dwell in. You repair the breaches, right? Every person matters. Every person matters. Say it with me. Every person matters, right? And what is our job? We're going to go where the garbage is and we rebuild. 
God's intended plan for those people who are stuck in garbage. We are going to be those where there's brokenness in relationship. We are the ones who help restore and repair those relationships. This is the job of the believer according to 2 Corinthians 5. We've been given the ministry of reconciliation. It is our job to be those that would go where there's breaches, we repair it. Where there is brokenness, we restore it. Where there is an inability for people to move forward because their road has been demolished, we build them a bridge. We help them get to where God has called them to go. This is who we are. This is who we are. And I am telling you, many of you are here because somebody built a bridge for you. Many of you are here because somebody was willing to reach out and somebody was willing to meet with you. Someone was willing to have a conversation. Someone was willing to pour into your life so that you would be restored and repaired. Amen? Come on. All right. Now we're going to jump into the other passage that really has shaped us, and it's Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Um, verse 11 we know this well, right? Talked about some of this last week in our interview with, with Malvina. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. We are an equipping center. We are a center for equipping. We are called to be an equipping center for God to work through you in the world around you. This is about the body of Christ becoming who the body of Christ is supposed to be. It is not about just doing more stuff in this building. We're here to equip you so you can be effective out there. Equip you so that you can have faith for the miracle out there. Not just here at the altar. I mean, we've seen lots of miracles. Come on. We, I, Dennis grew an inch. Literally. Literally. That's wild. We've seen legs grow out. Huh, Jim? Okay, we've seen God do supernatural miracles in this place. You get to carry that everywhere you go. And we want you equipped and trained to go out and do that. So we are a center for equipping. Let me tell you this as well. God... God has a very special plan for each of you in your world. And it's the mission that God puts on your heart and in your life. You know what we call that? We call it the mission in the moment. Like there might be this big grandiose prophetic ministry vision, some big thing off in the distance, right? And it feels off in the distance, doesn't it? Doesn't it, Dennis? Right? doing healing ministry in, uh, in the Netherlands and Sweden and all those places. It feels a little distant, but you know what? God opened the door for you to go to Germany, which he's going in August with Warren and Kelly, right? We, we bless that. It's exciting to see. But sometimes it can feel really far away. So we're responsible to say, God, what is my mission today? Am I equipped to do the mission that I have in front of me today? As a mother, as a father, as a husband, as a wife. You have a mission by God. As a friend. As a co-worker. As someone who shops at Walmart, Sandpoint, Social Club. Because you always see everybody you know at Walmart. It takes me forever to get through that place. Nathan, you're bad. Okay, your, your kids even know it. Your kids are like, Dad, don't go in the store. We'll go get it for you. Don't, don't go in because Nathan's going to be talking to a billion people in there. Come on. Yeah, I know. St. Arbucks, you mean. So there's this, there's this reality that you have to be equipped for the mission in the moment. You have to be equipped for the mission in the moment. And let's go to the next slide, the next scripture. Why? Why are we? We're building each other up. Right? For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the God, body of Christ, till what? Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Let's wait there for a second. 
we need each other until you're perfect. Hi. So until you die, until you are received into glory, we need each other. That's why we take commitment serious. We need you. And you need us. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. I, I love this because there's a goal at the end of this. Did you know what the goal is? To look like Jesus. Right? To the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. We get to help each other look like Jesus. So when we fellowship, when we spend time together, when we work together, we get to help each other look like Jesus every single time. And you know what's fun? Is if somebody's not looking like Jesus, say Laura Lynn is acting all types of weird. We don't have to come up to her and be like, Laura Lynn, you're acting uh, inappropriately and wrong and, and you need to change your behavior. Hey, Laura Lynn, I'm noticing something's going on. Let's talk. That doesn't seem like you. How can I pray for you? What do you need? Because I know who God has called you to be and some of that thing that's just happening right now, it's not really what God has for you and you know that. How can I help you? What's happening in your world? We actually advocate for each other's success. We help build each other up in our faith until we all look like Jesus. Yeah. Next verse. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Listen, we are to be grounded in knowing Jesus, not just knowing about Jesus. We have to be grounded in knowing Jesus, not just knowing about Jesus. We hold to and we trust God's word and the revelation of the spirit as he is the perfect guide and teacher. The issue here, we're no longer to be children tossed to and fro, which means that I go from, from as Peter calls it, the milk to the meat. Where we, when we chew on the meat of the word, it's, it means that there is a deeper level of intimacy with God. Listen, I, I just told this to a gentleman yesterday. Yes, you need to be in the Word every day, but there is a purpose behind being in the Word every day, and it's intimacy with God. It's so that you can get to know God. He reveals Himself in the Scriptures. And if you are seeking the Scriptures for knowledge and revelation that isn't Him, then you can get caught in the trickery and cunning craftiness of deceitful blotting. So, as we're seeking the Scriptures, come on. Let me just talk to my North Idaho folk for a moment. We are particularly well known for our ability to partner with conspiracy theories. I know, I know. Hey, hey, we got, we got that extra special something up here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when I first came up here, God had me go down some YouTube rabbit trails. Like, no, he did. And I'm like, oh, this is so dumb. Like, really? I take these two guys, young guys that had just showed up at the church, and they were really wanting to get involved, but they took me out to dinner, and they wanted to see if I was fully up to date on all the conspiracies I had just watched. Because if you're not, I don't know if you hear God. Okay? I was, it was a blessing. I was like, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I know about the FEMA camps. I know about the things and all the, you know, like we go on for days. You will not be grounded in your faith if you're seeking revelation knowledge apart from the relationship with Jesus. 
What did that have to do with you becoming like Jesus? Nothing. So why are you trying to tie it into end times prophecy when it's not actually leading you closer to Jesus? Why, when it gives you a judgmental spirit about all the people who don't agree with me, they must be the evil ones. As long as there is hate in your heart, you're partnering with the devil. We don't hate, we love. We don't curse, we bless. What in the world are we doing? Amen, hallelujah, praise Jesus. I know y'all were feeling the spirit right then in that awkward silence. Anybody take a bumper sticker off their car after last week? <laughs> I told her, I told her, if you're new here, I just told the church, I said, look, if you've got a Let's Go Brandon bumper sticker, you need to take it off because that is not from the Lord. You might have all your political beliefs, but God says, bless, don't curse. Come on, come on. Other way around too, right? No matter what you think of orange man bad or whatever else you want to think, no matter where you sit in that, you cannot let hate fill your heart for anyone ever, ever, ever. And you know, hate is knocking at the door of your heart. Hate is knocking at the door of your heart when you begin to judge people because they don't agree with you. Ooh, that felt good to get out. Okay, good, all right. I love you guys. All right, let's look at verse 15. It says, but speaking the truth in love, that we may grow up into all things into him who is the head, Christ. In verse 16, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effect of working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Boy, that's a mouthful. And let me just say, we are becoming like Christ as a community, together, ministering to each other. We edify one another for growth. We each have a part to play here. You each have a gift to give here. There is a mission when we gather. There's a mission for gathering. And it is not just a bless me Jesus moment. And I want a warm fuzzy. And I call it, I, I, I was touched by the spirit. No, you got it in your emotions. You got in your feels. It doesn't mean God touched you. Just because you felt good for a moment. And we go after that, okay? Like, we go after, I want to encounter the goodness of God. I want to feel Him. I want to experience Him in everything that I do. And sometimes I got to recognize that I'm getting really emotionally worked up, and I got to discern, God, is this you, or am I just hyped right now? Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. Sometimes it doesn't matter, just to be honest. Sometimes it doesn't matter. But the reality of who I am and the reality of what God wants to do in and through me is that he wants me to experience him in a manner that is authentic. Not worked up by emotion, but experiences of goodness which will move my emotion. There's a mission for us here. And it is to be a blessing to each other. It is to edify each other. This is why we prophesy. This is why we said, listen, we, our team, come on. We have a team of people that pray. And I've tasked all of our pastors, okay? We've got two people coming on as pastors right now. Well, three now with Will. I've asked the pastors, these upcoming pastors, to make it their number one priority in this season to prophesy. Their number one priority is to pray over this church, say, God, what are you saying to this person, to that person, to this person, and then go give that encouraging word to them. We must be the leaders that build up the body of Christ that edify itself. And if it's not happening from the leaders, we've got a core team that thrives on it. Kevin and Micah are great at it. They're the ones who are in Montana with the with human trafficking group, right? They took six people over there with them. Awesome. K 
Shelly and Warren are absolutely pursuing to hear God for each one of us. And let me tell you, when you get in a group of people where we're like, we want to encourage you because I was praying and heaven spoke and God is saying this about you. It edifies the body. This is part of our DNA. It's part of our DNA. And let me, let me also just say this. They do it, every single one of them does it within the boundaries that we've provided them. So nobody's just out here willy-nilly speaking on behalf of God and using it to manipulate you. And if I hear about that, it is bad news bears. I'm just telling you, I've got zero tolerance for manipulation in the prophetic. Zero tolerance for it. So if somebody's trying to get their own way by saying, God told me, therefore you should give me money. Therefore, God told me, therefore you should partner with me in this ministry. God told me, therefore you're supposed to be my spouse. We've heard it all. Okay? We've heard it all. Right? And we, and we just squash it right away. Like, nope, nope. Come on, Will says he's bachelor to the rapture, right? So we, we reject that in Jesus' name. All right. All right. I want to encourage us to have this heart. Maybe you just put up, as if, if you put up the main, the main slide for this. I just want to encourage us to have this heart. To have a genuineness of faith that is willing to serve, to lay down your life for one another as we reveal the love and power of God of this community around us. I just, I just felt like, you know, it was a little chaotic last week. We had some amazing events, lots of things happening last week. We had VBS all week, right? Which I think some people are just tired. <laughs> but let me just tell you, we have to consistently choose to serve one another. We have to consistently choose to lay our life down for each other. We have to consistently choose to serve. This is a church of leaders. We build leaders here. What do leaders do? They serve. They serve. So we must find our mission in the moment. I want us to take a moment and pray about your life right now, where you're at. I've talked about some things here in the church, but we always have to bring it home, don't we? We have to be able to say, okay, how does this apply to me? And I want us to pray. We're going to take a moment of silence. And I want you to begin to ask, maybe Will, if you could come. Or he's gone. Uh, did he? oh. All right. So, Zeph, will you go find Will for me real quick? I'm going to have Will come play. But if I want us to take a moment and just begin to ask God, what is the mission in the moment? Will, I want you on the keys. Thanks. Awesome. You might have to unmute the band. And Nathan can do that. Wesley can do that. Amen. Come on, let's activate these new guys. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Listen, I'm telling you, like we, how many of you know we're on a learning curve right now? Just thanks for your grace. Yep, our normal sound guy's out of town anyway, so praise God. With this, we need to take a moment and say, God, what is my mission today? What is it, Lord, that you're asking me to pursue today? Where, where do you want me serving? Where do you want me partnering with you in this season? Okay, what's my mission in the moment? Okay, what's my mission in the moment? Yeah, Father, thank you so much for what you're doing. I pray right now that you just begin to cover each person here as they consider what their mission is. How do you want them to build their next season? What do you want that to look like? Father, pour your spirit out right now that they would find their mission in the moment where you're calling them to be. And we're just going to take a moment and go after that.
As you discover that mission, ask the Lord what your next step is. What's my next step? What's the one thing that you're asking me to do today? Are you asking me to encourage somebody? What is it that you're asking me to do? What's the next thing? As a father, as a mother, as a parent, what's the next thing? What's my mission? And what's the first thing you want me to do, God? With that, I'd like for you all to stand with me. The world is broken and in desperate need of a savior. The pain and torment we live with is not from God. Our world has lost its mooring spiritually and the Father has sent Jesus to heal our brokenness and restore us to his intended purpose, to live with him and to do his work on the earth. Some of you today, as I was preaching, you'd say, that's me. I am somebody who is hurting and I am broken and I have not fully surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. You've talked about this mission of extending my soul, but I'm the hungry one. I'm the one that needs filling. I'm the one who's struggling today. And if that's you, I just want you to raise your hand right where you're at. If you'd say, I'm the one, thank you. I'm the one who needs to be filled. Listen, God is here today to meet you right where you're at. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. And, and I believe that today as God is revealing his purpose, the first thing he wants to do is heal your heart. He wants you to come back into contact with his perfect love that transforms our entire lives. If our ministry, altar ministry team can come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He, the Lord is here today to rescue you, to fill you, to renew you, and to call you out from any areas in your life where there's been mediocrity, where you have been stuck, where you have been in the mud, where you've needed to get out of the old ways and back on mission with God. He is here today to move you forward into that perfect destiny that he has set aside for your life. And if you've raised your hand to say, I'm hurt, I'm broken, and God, I've been stuck in the mud, I've had any of these issues, I'm going to ask you to come up and get prayer. Just come out of your seats right now. Come up. The altar ministry team is here. They're here just to pray with you. They want to spend time with you. And I believe that as God ministers to you this morning, as he ministers to you, you will have your eyes moved onto him. You'll have your heart shifted to him. You will come in contact with the love and power of God that changes everything. The altar is open. If you felt stuck, I feel like this. I feel some of you have absolutely felt stuck and you need to come and receive some prayer. We're going to break through with you this morning. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, that you are our you are the grease that moves the wheel. It's not by our might. It's not by our power. But it is by your spirit. And we surrender our lives to you today, God. We give ourselves fully to you and we praise you for what you are doing. In your glory and your goodness, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Harvest Valley Worship Center is called to be a refuge for healing and a launch pad for transformation. If this message impacted you today, please let us know in a comment, or you can email us at media at hvwc.com. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to connecting with you.